This video topic was requested by my patron, Soggy Jane. If you would like to become a patron and have your video topic requests prioritized, link down below. The other element that is not your lore book is your mechanics. So what I'm talking about is if you're using dice or stat sheets or modifiers or things like that, those are your game mechanics. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about your roleplay lore book structure. In this video, we're going to break down what a lore book is and what should go into it. This is part one of a two-part video. Now, in that part two, we're going to go over a bunch of tips on how to make your lore book nice and clean and polished. But in this video, we first need to establish what a lore book is and what exactly goes into it. A roleplay lore book is everything that a player needs to read about your roleplay before they start engaging in its story. After reading your lore book, a player should understand the basics of your world, what kind of character they can create, and also what kinds of characters and plots are going to be well received within your roleplay. Depending on the type of roleplay, your lore book could be incredibly simple or amazingly intricate. The more intricate and longer your lore book is, the more lore heavy your roleplay is, and all roleplays exist on a continuum of lore light to lore heavy. Where your roleplay exists on that continuum is going to dictate what kind of player your particular roleplay attracts. So before you start writing your lore book, make sure you have a clear idea of what kind of player you're trying to attract to your roleplay. Once you know that, I recommend watching my world building playlist. In particular, I recommend the world building 101 video, the player character video, and the locations video. And this particular video here that you're watching now, I'm gonna be speaking as if you've already seen those videos. So if you haven't, I will link the playlist up in the card, and I do recommend watching those three and then coming back to here. Next, let's talk about what elements belong in a lore book by first defining what elements do not belong in a lore book. Your rules are not your lore book. Your rules are something a player should agree to before they even read your lore book. And I've got a whole video about roleplay rules and what I recommend for those, so I will link that up in the card for you guys. The other element that is not your lore book is your mechanics. So what I'm talking about is if you're using dice or stat sheets or modifiers or things like that, those are your game mechanics. And in this video, I'm really talking about the lore, not the mechanics. So I'll give an example of what I'm talking about. In Dungeons & Dragons, if we take the Elvish race, for example, what I'm talking about is the story reasons and narrative reasons that they came to have fey ancestry. What I'm not talking about is that they get an advantage to saving throw against being charmed. The saving throw is the mechanic. How fey ancestry came to be is the lore. And what we're talking about today is the lore. We are also not talking about your application process. I made a whole video about the application process and I'm gonna link that up in the card as well if you're curious about that. So then, what elements do go into your lore book? Several of these elements I have made whole videos on, so I'm gonna be referencing those videos when I talk about those elements. I'm also going to be showing you guys how some of those elements are in my current roleplay that I'm running so that you have a good idea of what I'm talking about. So I am currently running a Discord roleplay, and the way I have my lore book set up is it's a list of channels that's under a category in the Discord server called Important. There are lots of ways you could set this up. Maybe it's a series of Google Docs, maybe it's a website, maybe it's a wiki or a blog. We'll talk more about setting that stuff up in part two, but just understand it needs to be organized in some way. The first element of your lore book is your plot summary. This element must go in your lore book, even if your roleplay is lore light. If no one knows the basic plot, no one can effectively engage in your roleplay. And you can see mine is the very first thing in my lore book, and I've got a video all about how to write your plot summary, so I will link that up in the card if you need more information on how to write that effectively. The second element of your lore book is your types of characters. These could be character classes, like what you have in Dungeons & Dragons. I'm running a supernatural roleplay here, so mine is a list of supernatural species. If you're running like a town roleplay set in modern day, maybe it's a list of the different jobs that happen in your town, etc, etc. You get the idea, but you have to have a place where you describe to people what kind of characters they can play. And you already watched my player character video, so you know exactly what I mean by this. The third element of your lore book is your locations. 
If we go back under setting where I first showed that plot summary post and we scroll down, you'll see descriptions of all of the locations in the roleplay. And you already watched my locations video, so you already know all about that. So moving on from that. All right, element number four. We're finally on to some of the things that I haven't made full videos about. This is sort of a catch-all section that I call my about section. These are a bunch of other things that players need to know that don't fall into locations or the player characters. My current roleplay is essentially a warring factions roleplay where it's mob family versus mob family on an island of supernatural creatures. And so with that particular setting, there's going to be a few things that people need to know besides just the species and the locations that you can play in. Here we go on to describe the families, the government structure, the economy, the island's geography, and the current affairs of the island. Exactly what goes into this section is going to depend a lot on the type of roleplay that you're running. What you need to think about is what is it that all players need to know for things to remain consistent within the roleplay. So I'll give an example. In this particular roleplay, it's set on a fictional Mediterranean island, but there's a lot of Las Vegas inspiration as well. Because of that Las Vegas inspiration, players that haven't taken the time to think about or look up or research what a Mediterranean island looks like were essentially having the island be a big desert island in the middle of the Mediterranean. That was not the vision for this island at all. So we need a geography section so that everyone knows kind of what the island looks like so they're all describing it the same. Unless you are born on a Mediterranean island, you are not born with the knowledge of what a Mediterranean island looks like. So expecting all of the players to accurately imagine a Mediterranean island and imagine it essentially the same way is just not realistic. So therefore, this roleplay needs a geography section. Your roleplay might not need a geography section. For example, if it's set in downtown Manhattan, there's so many movies and TV shows that are set in that area. People are basically going to imagine it the same way. You probably don't need to describe the geography of downtown Manhattan. So take some time to think about it and everything else goes in the about section. And if there's any of this that you'd like to see expanded on, like uh, government, geography, economy, anything like that that I have listed for this about section, let me know down below. I can make whole videos about all of that stuff. Element number five is the FAQ. The FAQ answers all of the player's common questions. Most of the time, this is information that can be deduced from reading the other sections of the lore book, but it's not explicitly stated in other sections. People are not mind readers, so an FAQ ensures that this information is communicated clearly. In my current roleplay, we have an FAQ section about each of the families, about each of the species, and we have some application guidance as well as a section for overall questions. I recommend trying to anticipate some of the questions players might have to kind of seed your FAQ in the beginning. But of course, because this is an FAQ, you'll have a lot of questions that you'll realize are questions once the roleplay starts and you start getting in players. So this section will grow as the roleplay grows. Element number six is your bios section. I have a whole video about bios, link in the card for more information on that. But let's scroll down here and check out some of our bio sections. So we have the cast here, which is all of the player character bios. We have NPCs, which is all of the NPC bios. And we have open characters, which are characters you can apply for if you don't want to make your own from scratch. Depending on the structure of your roleplay, whether it's like a canon bio roleplay, or maybe it's a skeleton roleplay, or maybe it's an OC roleplay, you might have different things in exactly how your bio section is structured. But either way, you need to have some kind of bio section because players joining the roleplay need to know what sorts of things are already covered, what sorts of connections they might be able to have for their character, and things like that so that they can make a character that can effectively and easily engage with what's already there. Element. Number seven, and the last element, is the inspiration section. This is where we put a whole bunch of other stuff that's good to have before you join the roleplay. Exactly what this has will depend both on the skills of you and your mod team and also what kind of roleplay it is that you're running. In this one, we have a Spotify playlist, a Pinterest, and a list of most wanted roles. Most wanted roles is very important in my roleplays because I pretty much always have the characters choose a job or a role within the location that the roleplay is set to make sure that all of the characters have a purpose within the world. So knowing what jobs we'd like to see is really important. 
If your roleplay isn't focused in that same way, maybe your most wanted section is more like most wanted face claims or most wanted plots or most wanted canon characters. It just depends on what type of roleplay you're running. But either way, it's important to let new players know what is wanted and what is needed in the roleplay. Knowing what you're looking for will help ease players in who are a little bit nervous about what kind of character to make when they're joining. Creating a Pinterest is something I highly recommend. It is a visual medium which is great for communicating the overall tone of your roleplay. On average, the brain processes visual information 60,000 times faster than text. So you can say with words until you're blue in the face about what your intention is with your roleplay, but that will never be as good as a well-placed photo. For example, let's go into our Pinterest and go into the family's Pinterest and go into EOS. This is one of the factions of the roleplay. So what do we see here? We see burning cop cars, we see face masks. You know now without me having to tell you that this is the rebel faction. They're out here trying to overthrow the system. So I highly recommend using a visual medium like Pinterest to communicate the intent and tone of your roleplay. And that is the end of your lore book. So today, what we did is we defined what a lore book is, we also defined what a lore book isn't, and we went through all of the elements that go into your lore book. If there's any pieces that you heard in this video that I don't yet have full videos on and you're more curious about them, let me know down below. I can totally expand on any of these sections that don't have their own dedicated videos yet. For example, expanded videos on all of those different about section things, tips on how to write a good FAQ, I can do an expansion on different types of like bios for roleplay like um, OC and skeleton and canon bios, anything like that, just let me know. So there's going to be a part two to this video because there is lots of ground to cover. What we really did today was just show the structure of a lore book. We really didn't get a chance to go into the tips and tricks and how to make sure your lore book not only exists, but is really good and communicates exactly what you wanted to communicate. So that's what's gonna happen in part two. So make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss that if you enjoyed this video. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day.